Transition towards sustainability can be a challenge. Retasking energy, water and communications infrastructure to enable business growth, strengthen resilience and reduce carbon footprints is a profound recalibration. Black & Veatch helps companies achieve these sustainable outcomes through infrastructure delivered at scale. 100% employee owned and a natural fit for the conversations here at COP28. I caught up with Yusuf Majane and Deepa Poduval from Black & Veatch here in Dubai. COP28 is a perfect fit for something like Black & Veatch, isn't it? Yeah, COP28 is in Dubai is where the world is coming together to talk about sustainability. You know, you have regulators, world leaders, uh, manufacturers, clients. So I'm excited to be here to talk to all these stakeholders and, and discuss the different solutions to move forward with the sustainability journey. There's no place like COP to bring together the public and the private sectors together, right? So this is an exciting week to be here because often those conversations are happening, you know, where the policymakers are talking to each other or the private sector is getting together to solve challenges. And now we get to be here and swap notes and solve some of those challenges together. Well, let's talk about this in a bit more detail over at the studio, shall we? Great. Deepa, Yusuf, great to see you. Thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us. So, Black & Veatch, wow, tell us a bit about the company. Thank you, Andrew. We're very excited to be here at COP28. Um, Black & Veatch is an over 100-year-old employee-owned company. Um, we, sustainable infrastructure has been in our DNA, you know, through that entire uh, period of time. We work in energy, we work in water, we work in telecommunications and, you know, have a very broad portfolio of solutions. We have uh, built over 100 gigawatts of solar and wind energy um, through the project work that, that we've been involved in. Um, we um, have been involved in putting on the ground over 30,000 chargers for electric vehicles and, and dispensers associated with that. 20% of the world's potable water are, have been delivered through projects that Black & Beach has been involved in. We're also looking ahead, um, you know, and so part of what we're focused on is finding those innovative technologies that can act as accelerants and step changes as we're trying to make our journey to 1.5 degrees centigrade. So we have our in-house uh, accelerator called Ignite X, um, and it focuses on clean tech, um, looking for emerging fuel sources, looking for um, agricultural technology, looking for long-term energy storage, um, um, and so we're very excited to combine the breadth and depth uh, of the experience that our legacy brings to the table with where the future is going with these innovative technologies and really bring that full portfolio to our, to our clients and the world at large. Wow. Yusuf? Yeah, I want to mention the decarbonization as, as, as we started the conversation with. It's a, it's a challenging journey for, for a lot of organizations because it's, it forces them to look at their infrastructure the whole value chain of, of their infrastructure. So um, we are positioned to look at the whole value chain for them. And uh, we have been supporting a lot of clients globally uh, doing that. So just to give some examples, um, we just delivered uh, or helped a Canadian LNG customer to uh, um, electrify their processes by delivering for them green hydropower. Um, on the EV charging, we're helping EV manufacturers, but also energy majors to build uh, EV infrastructures nationwide and, and in huge, uh, massive programs. We have been doing that in the US, but also across different countries in, the, in Europe. Um, uh, sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work there and, and we gained a lot of experience and we're helping customers also globally in this regard. I want to talk a bit more about decarbonization in a moment. But first of all, I'm struck by the fact that you're 100% employee owned. I mean, how does that dynamic change in a company? Yeah, so, so we are, uh, we're really uh, a company of people. Um, we're probably one of the largest employee-owned companies in the world, which means we are, at the same time, employees and shareholders of the company. So we work for each other. So I work for Deepa, and Deepa works for me, right? And uh, we take care of each other. And this, this is very much reflect. I mean, this is sustainable workforce by itself, right? And, and it's reflected in the safety culture that, that is very eminent in, in our company. But it's also very much in line with our vision and our identity as, as the leader in sustainable infrastructure. And yeah, and, and we would like to use this culture and point it toward the customer, partner with the customer to help them also 
you know, in, in their decarbonization and, and sustainable uh, journey. So that decarbonization journey, the sustainability goal that so many companies want to achieve, it can be a complicated journey. And you've had to make some difficult decisions yourselves, haven't you, along the way? We have. Um, a few years ago, we made this decision to transition out of building coal-fired plants. And as you can imagine, over our 100-year history, that was a big part of Black & Beach's work. Um, and especially in emerging markets like Asia, where it was a very active part of our portfolio. Um, but at, some, you know, at one point, we put a stake in the ground and we said, um, that is not something that Black & Beach is going to do anymore. Um, and it was a big, um, you know, it was, it, it was a challenging decision for us because it really meant that we needed to switch our business operations around. But we've, we've made that transition and it's allowed us to free up our workforce and redirect them towards um, clean energy options. And so, you know, over 50% of Black & Beach's portfolio now is, is uh, solar and wind power, right? A number of private companies have um, committed to transitioning to low carbon solutions, but being able to, um, being able to compare the return on the investments that they're making relative to existing infrastructure and technology, as well as present a long-term vision for the role that those new technologies will play in their portfolio um, is part of an ongoing challenge that we see clients face. And so we see clients really um, trying to address those challenges. And our approach is to take a full life cycle um, uh, perspective in supporting them. So going all the way from strategy and finance and marketing to technology choices and engineering and construction and even operations of these assets. Um, we try to bring our capabilities and point them to support our clients making the best strategic decisions, making the best technical decisions um, at a tactical level that they can so that they can um, have, given this world of uncertainty, the best economic and technology choices to accelerate their decarbonization journeys. Yes, Jeff. I can give some examples. I mean, um, it is a challenging journey because, again, you have to look at the whole uh, value chain. And we're working, for example, with uh, one of the major European manufacturers in looking at the whole value chain. And, and I want to give the, some, some examples on, on what, what I mean by that. So at first, they want to have green source to, to uh, um, feed their plant, right? So we're looking at different different options and how, how we can make it sustainable and, and, and green energy to get in. But then it's about the processes inside the plant. And we're helping them to electrify and digitalize the processes inside. So it's it's the whole the whole chain from, from A to Z. And, and we're really positioned in a way that we can we can address those those or and identify those points and help them to make the decisions to decarbonize their their operations. Uh, and deeper thousands of national delegates are coming to a meeting like this and they all have their own anxieties about transition because this is a moment for the planet, a jeopardy, a moment filled with jeopardy, but nonetheless a moment of transition. What could Black & Veatch offer to that debate about moving from the past into the future? It, this is a great question. You know, first, I think it's really important for us to recognize that progress has been made, right? 2022 was a landmark year in that um, investments towards low carbon technologies um, exceeded one trillion for the first time. And they also exceeded investments in traditional energy sources. Um, so while that's, that's impressive, estimates say that we need three to four times that investment annually to get to where we've all stacked hands and said, you know, in the Paris Agreement that we will, we will point the world at. Um, so, you know, that said, a company like Black & Beach brings the breadth of our perspective um, because we are seeing across regions, we are seeing across technologies, we are seeing across the entire value chain and being able to see the interconnectedness, right, of energy and water and the food cycle um, and being able to craft solutions that can um, accelerate the, the transition and uh, being able to tie in innovation with that, again, because of the breadth of what we're seeing across the world, uh, taking our lessons learned from one part of the world to another. Um, so the breadth of our perspective, I would say, is, you know, is the first thing that we bring. So if you think about the power of one project 
to really turn the ship. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's humbling, but it's powerful. Um, and so being able to act as catalysts for making those step changes um, and accelerating the transition is sort of the second element that, you know, that, that we work with clients on. And then the third, I would say, is ecosystem. You know, when you're at a point like this that's inherently um, very dynamic, there are market inefficiencies, right? Information is not shared perfectly. And so being able to link the different parts of the value chain together has tremendous um, uh, potential to create impact. Um, one good example of where that's been done well is in the US with the Department of Energy, right? They kind of ran this race to identify hydrogen hubs. They said, well, we have $7 billion in this bag of money to give out to successful applicants. But they didn't say, come to us with your hydrogen projects. They said, bring us your concepts for regional hydrogen hubs. And what that essentially did is it brought together suppliers, it brought together the demand side of the equation, as well as the communities in which these hubs will be located and accelerated the conversations between them. Um, and so I thought that's brilliant. And you know, in, in sort of a microcosm of that, that is a role that Black & Beach plays as well. Um, you know, because we're working with those different parts of the value chain is being able to create those connections um, and, and support accelerating some key projects. I mean, what I'm getting from you is that you, you're in the solutions business. So, uh, you know, your optimism is kind of radiating out of about a sort of can-do approach to getting things done. But let's not kid ourselves. There's some huge problems ahead for the global economy, are there not? Yeah, it, it's, it's a journey. It's a, if, if you think about solar energy, if you, look, if you look at solar energy five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, bef before now, it does, did not have the scale that it has today. So, and I think for the those new technologies, the carbon capture, sustainable aviation fuel, but also green hydrogen, it's, it is a journey that, that it starts and, and you will need all the stakeholders to be on the table. So you need the regulators, you need the subsidies, uh, you need the uh, manufacturers, the OEMs, you, ne you, need them to, you need to give them the time and the pilot projects to allow them to scale their, their equipment and also bring them to a cost that, that will be viable for the investors. But also you need to, to uh, motivate and, and bring interest into the off-takers of, let's say, green hydrogen or green ammonia. So it's, it's all the stakeholders that, that have to come on the table. And, and as Deepa mentioned, we're, as, as Black & Beach, we're, we're connecting all these stakeholders uh, together. We're very optimistic about, about the future. We, we see ourselves, again, as, as the leader in sustainable infrastructure. But it's a journey that it, it will take time until, until we get where we want to get now. I mean, Yusuf said optimistic there. I mean, deeper long-term vision, are you an optimist? Definitely. I'm, I'm very energized about where we are this moment in time. I feel like, you know, quite by happenstance, you know, like I am in the right place at the right time. Um, there's so much work to be done, but we are the right people to help do it. And that's incredibly empowering. Um, I, I have a great deal of optimism about about the future and uh, the impact that we can we can have. Not underestimating the challenges, not underestimating the journey that is to be had, but you, I, I believe it's doable and I believe technology breakthroughs will uh, support getting us there. Yusuf, final thought from you? Yeah, it's, uh, I think I cannot think about a better place to be for, for myself, you know, uh, employee owned company and uh, being, being the leader in, in, in this sustainability and really making you know, bringing great projects and great solutions to the world. Um, super happy and super excited and uh, optimistic. Great. Yusuf Majana and Deepa Podoval, thanks very much indeed, both of you, for joining us today. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for having us.